captured in a bottle discover an effective lubricant for moving parts functioning in a total vacuum. Endlessly examine the environmental deterioration of matter, especially metal. Search for answers to the questions of space existence. Search, in fact, for the questions. And in the meantime, new facilities must be developed to meet the accelerated needs of the program. And it is axiomatic that facilities pace all other effort. Facilities for fabrication, engineering personnel, for development, for testing, and inevitably, for launch and flight. For Saturn, there was Launch Complex 34. Two years in the making, dominating the north end of the Cape with its towering 300-foot gantry, Complex 34 awaited Saturn. From Alabama to Cape Canaveral is 2,000 miles by water. Too huge for conventional transport, the Saturn vehicle floated the first leg of the journey to space on the back of a barge. In a summer dawn, Saturn appears off the Florida coast. The piggyback passenger, prone and piecemeal, is tugged a final short step toward the launch site, toward fulfillment. The inland river routes to Canaveral are lined with throngs, the young, the curious, all those who sense in the arrival of the recumbent giant the meaningful appointment with history. And some waiting who know intimately the history of the appointment. Assembly into flight position begins. First, the booster, now vertical, in flight position on the launch pedestal. For the first research and development flights of Saturn, the two upper stages are not powered. The second stage here is merely a water-filled passenger, an aerodynamic component. In later versions, this Saturn stage will be powered by high-energy liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen engines. The third stage, a modified Centaur, is also inert here, programmed to ride with water ballast. This stage may also be powered in later Saturns by two similar high-energy engines. To complete the vehicle, the nose cone is mated to the upper stage. This, the first Saturn, does not carry an active payload. But later, when the giant has matured, the installation of the nose cone, filled with instruments and detection and recording devices, or communication systems, will be of overriding importance. And in time, the descendants of Saturn will be topped by a spacecraft bearing humans en route to the moon. Saturn is ready for flight. Three years plus a few months, and now only a few hours away from the absolute test. Countdown was initiated at 11 p.m. October 26th. After daylight, the gantry moved back on schedule. Saturn stood alone. Shortly after 9 a.m., a short hold occurred to wait out a weather condition. Weather okay, countdown resumed. 10.05 a.m., October 
16 stories tall, weighing nearly 500 tons, Saturn flew. All objectives were achieved, all satisfactorily. But beyond the moment of great accomplishment, the engineering and scientific triumph, what does the first Saturn flight bring in return? Earlier, this was said. Space is open to us now, and our eagerness to share its meaning is not governed by the efforts of others. We go into space because whatever mankind must undertake, free men must fully share. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space, and none will be so difficult or expensive to accomplish. Thus, toward that goal, a giant step, the first Saturn, a product of directed human talent and energy, which will be followed by other steps to eventually give to all mankind a freedom from the restraints of Earth, to probe toward the enlargement of knowledge, to move toward the far reaches of the unknown, to bring the visible and invisible universe into the catalog of human experience. These steps to Saturn continue.